I'm one of the volunteers that helped with the uh, Phase 1 habitat survey here in Senning, Upper Beeding and Bramber. The whole area we divided into about six sections and together with my colleague Deepa we surveyed most of the area you can see behind me here. The whole area is about 800 acres we believe and is mostly uh, based on the chalk downland and all of the area we surveyed was within the South Downs National Park. So armed with our maps and our guides and the map we were filling in, we started doing the survey. Now this wasn't quite as straightforward as we thought it might be. You can see that most of the land behind us is, is quite well farmed, it's heavily farmed. Um, there aren't that many public rights of way across the land and we didn't get permission from all the landowners to cross their land to do the surveys. So some of the surveys were done on foot and we could see what we were, were looking at. Other parts we had to use binoculars to, uh, to, to view the landscape. So as we started doing our surveys, as you can see behind me, a lot of the landscape is, is, is farmed um, with arable fields, uh, with grassland. And it was the grassland in particular we're looking at to see if it was unimproved, semi-improved or improved. You can see the farmland behind me has pockets of perhaps more interesting habitat as far as surveyors are concerned, with pockets of unimproved grassland, scrub and some hedgerows and one or two woodlands as well. And one of the interesting woodlands we discovered, um, you probably can see just in the distance, it's called Bramber Beaches and we managed to get access and have a look at that and that was planted as a, a diamond a jubilee celebration woodland for the Women's Institute in 1980 so it's been here 40 years. When we actually surveyed it it's composed almost entirely of sycamore, Italian alder, field maple and some pine trees there are actually very few beach. Given, so given the name of uh, Bramber Beaches, you'd imagine there would be a beech wood, and it may be that's what they intended, but it does seem that the other trees perhaps crowded out the beach and it didn't quite develop. But still a nice woodland. So as far as doing the survey, we set off with our, our maps and a set of coloured crayons, like being back at school and a key to show how we colour in the map according to what we could see on the ground. So it did mean we had to look at the, uh, the habitat very closely with the guides to see what species of particularly grass and wildflowers we were seeing and then colouring the sheet according to whether it was um, chalk grassland unimproved or semi-improved with slightly different mix of uh, species or indeed arable, in which case we tried to note what crops were growing in the field, although accepting that that will change over time. So whilst we were doing the survey, if we discovered anything of particular interest, um, a hedgerow with a nice mix of trees, or a pond with some interesting side vegetation, um, we put what we called a target note. So the, uh, the location of the target note was noted on our map, uh, the little description of what, what we were seeing on the ground. The rough sheets that we were filling in uh, we took home at the end of the survey. Our survey took place during most of the summer and we were out six or seven times doing the survey. So the rough sheets that we produced during our surveys were transferred into a single master sheet by the surveyors and that master sheet was then given to one of our number who then digitised it and produced the map that you can see today. I've lived in Senning for about 35 years and thought I knew the landscape around here pretty well. I've certainly walked on all the public footpaths and bridleways. But doing the habitat survey has meant you, you concentrate much more at what you're walking over and looking at and really begin to understand how the habitats work with each other and how important they are for all of us.